Focal length plays a significant role in how we make a photograph. Choosing a telephoto lens can isolate a subject and a wide angle shot can immerse the viewer in the surroundings. But I've never really considered focal lengths longer than a standard telephoto zoom lens, i.e. your 70 to 200 or 50 to 140. But that was until recently. So I've been putting together my behind the scenes video to accompany my zine this week. And it was very interesting because I was taking a look at all the different focal lengths that I shot a lot of the project with and I was really interested to see what the focal lengths were for the final 48 images and it was very very surprising. So I'm going to be talking about that today as we head up to this pretty awesome spot that I've never been to before at the top of the Priscilla Hills which is a fantastic place. So hopefully there'll be some nuggets that you can take away today if you're thinking about maybe expanding your lens lineup or maybe you're considering about which lens to take out on your next photography trip. So I'll see you a bit further up the trail. It's just amazing up here. I haven't seen another single person. We're right in the middle of the summer holidays. It's absolutely fantastic. Nobody comes up here. It's just amazing. Anyway, this looks like a good spot to have a little chat. So at the start of my 30 day photography project, I picked up this lens, the Fuji XF 70-300 f4 to f5.6 zoom lens, because I knew that I might want to capture a few wildlife images during the project. But what I wasn't thinking about at the start of the project was just how much I would go on to use this lens throughout those 30 days. Now, this isn't a lens review video, it's more about focal length, but I'm now finding this lens is a mainstay in my camera bag, which is really interesting. I never thought for one moment my 50 to 140 lens I love so much would be replaced. Now, I'm definitely not getting rid of it, and I'll explain why later, but my workhorse lens seems to be getting left behind more often now. So 7300 is about 105 to 450 if you're on full frame. So yeah, it's got an absolutely massive reach and it's pretty small as well. There's a couple of areas that really interest me. We've got the summit of Carmenian to my left hand side and then this rocky tour over to my right hand side. I'd like to visit both tonight if I've got time. Absolutely stunning. Some beautiful light out across the coast as well. So let's get up here. See if we can get a good view across the landscape and see where we can make an image this evening. So out of the 48 photos in my zine, one image was shot with a 50 to 140 lens, seven were shot on the 13 millimeter prime lens, 27 were shot with a 16 to 55, and 13 shot on this, the 70 to 300. But what was more interesting was out of those 13 images with this lens, nine were shot with a focal length over 150 millimeters, meaning if I hadn't have purchased this lens at the beginning, I would have missed out on nine photos from that 48 that made the final zine and that is quite a big number of photos. That's steeper than it looks. Oh, what a view. This is amazing. So this area is steeped in history. The pathway we were just walking down is called the Golden Road and that was an ancient trade route that used to serve Ireland and bring traffic through this area. A bit further down there we've got an outcrop called Fol Goidog, which is where the blue stones came from for Stonehenge. And that's pretty incredible in itself because they were transported from this loca location here and down there 180 miles across land to Salisbury Plain, which is no mean feat, is it? Absolutely ridiculous. And why they did it, we'll probably never know. But yeah, they came from, or at least some of the stones came from this area. Incredible, incredible history here. We've got cairns pretty much on every hillside. There's burial chambers, there's stone circles. There's just so much going on here from the Bronze and Iron Age. It's just absolutely brilliant. But we're here to get an image and I think I've found my first composition that I'd like to try and work on just down here on this outcrop of rock. Well, basically what we've got, we've got the dark tapestry of the hillside beyond where it's kind of in shadow if you like, but the light is hitting these rocks here and just lighting them up. And I think it's going to be a simple framing, but I might just need to 
drop down a little bit. I think I'm a little bit too high to get the best perspective. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to lower ourselves just a little and work on that. Hopefully we'll get some good light. Ah, uh, yes, I think probably about here we'll do. Let's, uh, let's set up just here. So as we were talking about the 7300 and the amount of images that I captured during those 30 days, I think looking at those numbers, it's fair to say that I've been missing out on a lot of shots in the past because I just didn't own a lens capable of reaching those distances, which is one of the reasons it's now in my bag pretty much all of the time. Now this lens isn't perfect in terms of image quality. It's not quite as sharp as my workhorse 50 to 140 and the bokeh is kind of swirly when you shoot wide open, but I think I'm happy to embrace some of those imperfections because of the reach it gives me. It's stabilised, weather sealed, lightweight and really small for its reach. But is it the perfect landscape photography lens? Well, I've come up with my own conclusion from my experience shooting with it over the last few months, which I'll share in just a moment after we take this shot here, as this light is looking like it might change so as ever we're waiting for the light but i've got my composition framed up on about 110 mil on the 7300 lens i've zoomed in just onto this outcrop of rock and i'm waiting for the light to just disappear off the background so hopefully we get a little bit of contrast just light on the rocks shadow in the background but it's a wonderful tapestry of fields and woodlands beyond really nice and it does actually work even with the light on the background as well. So if we don't get what I was after in the first instance, I think it could work well as it is right now. So what I might do is take a shot, focusing on those rocks, F10, ISO 125 and a 50th of a second. I've got the 10 second timer on and that's something that I tend to do when I'm using this lens. I've found it takes a little time to settle, especially if the ground is a little bit spongy. Now, there's no tripod collar on this lens, which is probably one of its downfalls, but it does help reduce the weight, I guess. But obviously it will make your lens wobble a little bit more. So just, I found it takes a little longer to settle, especially when you're at longer focal lengths. So yeah, 10 second time is always good. I always leave the image stabilization on as well when I'm using this lens. So yeah, I quite like that last shot. I think the simplicity is right up my street. Anyway, getting back to the focal length, I think when I'm photographing in the woodland, I'll probably take my 50 to 140 lens because it meets the focal length of my standard zoom lens. Whereas the 70 to 300 will leave a 15 millimeter gap. When I'm shooting woodland photos, I often find I'm shooting between 35 millimeters and 75 millimeters. So I don't think the 70 to 300 would work well for that scenario. Everything else though, I think I would be happy to sacrifice 15 millimeters in the middle of the focal range and a little bit of sharpness for the extra reach that this lens has. Now, having had this extra reach, I think it's hard to go back now. Another option would be is to pick the two times teleconverter for the 50 to 140, but the 7300 lens is already lighter and smaller and adding a teleconverter, it will no doubt degrade image quality of the other lens. So it will look like the 50 to 140 will be my lens to purely go to for my woodland photography from now on, which is a shame because I really do love that lens. So I think what we might do now is make our way down to the rocky outcrop that we were just shooting to see if we can make a composition there over sunset. We've got about 30 minutes, I think, until that golden hour really kicks in. I mean, it looks like we might get some good light <laughs> and hopefully I haven't put the mockers on that. But right now, things are looking really good. The light is absolutely fantastic. Beautiful diffused light coming off the coast, lighting up my foreground. I've got this boulder field here, stretching out to Fold Goidog, the historic site where the blue stones were taken from for Stonehenge. So that's our main focal point, and I've situated that on the top left-hand third. The light's hitting these boulders, which looks absolutely amazing. 
The sky, you know, it's kind of washed out, um, but there is a little bit of detail there, and that light's just pouring through the scene, so I'm not too worried. It's quite diffused as well, so I think it works quite well. I don't even think I need to bracket it, you know, I'm just gonna let the highlights go a little bit in this shot. I'm not too worried. There's no flaring or anything like that. F11, having a nice depth of field here at 35 mil. Should speeds at a hundredth of a second, ISO 125. So when I finish taking this shot, I will conclude my thoughts on the 70 to 300. But I must concentrate on this first, as this light is sublime. So another reason I like to have this lens in my bag is because when I'm shooting video, it gives me the option of really getting in close and that's great for wildlife. So you might have noticed over the course of the last few weeks, I've captured some amazing wildlife video footage with this lens. We've captured peregrines and also wild otters feeding in those lily ponds, which is just sublime. Without this lens, I just wouldn't have been able to capture that footage to share with you guys. So yeah, it's uh, got to be in the bag from now on. Now, of course, these findings are based on things that I've learned over the last few months and your mileage may differ. And I would be really interested to know, could you do without a long telephoto lens in your kit bag or do you plan to get one? Let me know in the comments. It'd be great to hear your thoughts as ever. As we were talking about photography projects before and how inspiring they can be from a creativity standpoint, I highly recommend checking out this video that is up here where I talk in depth about starting a project with a tangible outcome. It's definitely worth a watch. Anyway, I hope you took a few nuggets away from this video. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. That really helps me out. And if you really enjoyed it, please consider subscribing for more content like this. Anyway, guys, until next week, take care and I'll see you all very soon.